Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. A little while back I asked you guys, what's the fragrance that when you first got it, you first smelled it, you loved it? You thought to yourself, well, this is what a fragrance should be. And then as time went on, for one reason or another, you started to hate it. Yeah, the tides turned, time and space warped and twisted, and suddenly something that you once loved and held dear was just disgusting to you. And you guys answered. And today, I'm sharing with you 10 fragrances you loved and now you hate. I think the opposite of this, much nicer. Fragrances that at one point you hated and then you realized, man, I shouldn't have judged that so harshly so quickly. All 10 fragrances featured in today's video are linked in the description and here's a bunch of codes that you can use. So let's kick things off with one that's maybe a little bit controversial but was also the most mentioned fragrance. You'll see why and you'll be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. It's from Scott's Two Cents who says, mine is Creed Aventus. First time I put it on, the scent was fantastic. I've tried it a few more times. For some reason, each time I put it on now, it gets worse and worse. I even got a second sample to confirm my first sample had not gone bad. How big is your sample that you can wear it over and over and over and it keeps getting worse? I guess a decant, right? Surely not like a little 1.5 mil sample. Ah, it's worse every time. But Aventus was mentioned a bunch of times and it makes sense why. I mean, Aventus, as time has gone on, you know, the general perception of the scent and of Creed in general within the fragrance sphere has become more and more negative. For multiple reasons, of course, you know, Olivier Creed and Erwin Creed pretending to be master perfumers. Yeah, that didn't go over so hot. The price constantly going up more and more and more, and then the bottle size getting smaller, the fragrances being reformulated. A lot of people would say, you know, getting weaker, getting worse, the quality dropping in many people's eyes, while at the same time, those other things happening, the price going up and the bottle size going down. A lot of that's gonna make people pissed. And with the Ventus being the crown jewel in the men's fragrance line for Creed, it would make sense that a lot of people over time would start to maybe not jive with it quite as much as they used to. Now I will say that Creed Aventus, I still think smells really good. I think that it's extremely versatile, one of the most versatile fragrances ever made. It has good performance for me. Uh, of course, there are batch variations, but let's not get into that. And when it first released, it was an extremely unique scent profile. But over time with like 50,000 different clones and different niche fragrances and designer fragrances that smell similar to it and all those other reasons I mentioned, yeah. A lot of people used to love this and don't anymore. Sorry, guy. Up next, we got one uh, from Noblees 111 or is that Noblees 111? I don't know. Personally, it's Versace Pour Homme. Oh, Versace, what do you do? I like it. I'm not sure if it's been reformulated since I first smelled it back in 2013 but it just doesn't feel the same in recent years. I mean, I was only 10 and it was the first fragrance I'd ever owned. Starting young, that's good. And I was never into the whole fragrance thing until just this last year. So maybe it's partly due to me maturing over the years. I would not think that, uh, you know, a reformulation on this one would be a cause for you to, you know, like it in 2013, and not like it now. It is possible that you know, when you were younger, it just smelled better to you for one reason or another. And as time has gone on and you smelled more things and maybe you're starting to like figure out what you like, like what your style is. Maybe this just doesn't fit that quite as much. That's possible. There are fragrances, uh, you know, over the years for me uh, that I've smelled at one point in time or another, especially when I was younger, where I thought at the time, like, oh, this smells awesome. This smells great. And if you tried to get me to wear that same thing nowadays, I'd be like, that's okay, man. I'll, I'm good. I'll go with something else. I mean, there was a time that I wore a bunch of Axe, you know, I had, I had like an Axe collection, a Lynx, if you are not in the United States, I guess. But yeah, Axe, I, I had a bunch of them, man. I also had actual fragrances at the same time, but when I was in high school, yeah, I, I had an Axe collection, lots and lots of bottles. And I did have favorites. Uh, I think Phoenix was the one that I wore the most, but uh, you know, going to today, would I wear a lot of those that I was wearing then? No. 
Caleb Yerk 6017 says, when I first smelled Dolce & Gabbana, the one gold right after release, I fell in love with the unique champagne-like opening, which on my skin lasted well into the dry down. I remember telling the saleswoman at Macy's, this smells like sparkling grape juice. And she agreed. Now that sickly sweet smell makes my stomach churn and I get a nauseating headache even from a single sniff. Let's see if I can get nauseated here really quickly. Let's just uh, spray that on there. It is sweet though. One thing that I'll tell you here that will hopefully make you feel better, uh, you probably don't have to worry too much because I think that this fragrance is not gonna be easy to find for too much longer. Yeah. This is one of those fragrances that I see riding off into the sunset. And by that, I mean not being able to be found at discounters either and the maybe not too distant future. It was not a rip roaring success, I believe. And uh, yeah, maybe it's because of you, Caleb. You know. I do feel like overall for me that this is one of the weaker Dolce & Gabbana, the one releases, uh, you know, it didn't have great performance for me off my skin. And when I say weaker, yeah, I mean that in terms of performance, but what I meant originally was just not one of the best the one releases, so. It is what it is, the one gold. You're not one of the best. Pierre-Luc Tremblay says, in the early 2000s, there was a huge hype for this guy, Jean-Paul Gaultier Lumont, which was so different from everything available at that time, and I really liked the sweetness and lavender notes. A year later, I couldn't stand it because the only thing I was smelling is cinnamon. Not interested in wearing a fireball shot. That is interesting that this one somehow warped from being like a, you know, powdery lavender vanilla kind of scent and, and became fireball? I mean, yeah, yeah, the fireball, I, I definitely, I, I don't get it. That being said, I could see this one being that type of scent that for one reason or another, uh, just grows in reverse on people. It does a Benjamin Button. It pulls that old rigmarole where you thought you had something special and then just fell apart. And one reason for that is because of course, so many people wore this when it was brand new. Uh, as you said, it was really hyped, very popular. So it could be one of those deals, a victim of its own success where people smell it too much and then just don't want to wear it because it's so common. How do we say this? Okay, Einer Hober Grossmussen. Is, is that close? I don't know. Versace Dylan Blue. <laughs> Versace, I'm sorry. I got a sample of it years ago from my mother and I really liked it. Now as time has gone on and while so many people wear it, I just can't stand the spicy amber note in it. It always gets me when I smell this stuff in public. To be fair, when it comes to um, blue fragrances in general, there are uh, you know certain people with certain fragrances where it just does not work for them for one reason or another. You know there will be something in the scent profile that just for whatever reason does not work for their their brain. You know they smell it, and they're like whatever that was. I just smelled it. <laughs> I'm gonna barf. I know that uh, like Bulgari's Aqua Atlantique, for example, uh, some people really cannot stand that one. I know it's not easy to find that anymore, but just as an example, or like Aqua de Jo Ascenza, uh, that one when it was new and, and for a while after when you could still find it, people really, some people, really hated it because they would get like an egg smell from it. And a lot of different aquatic scents um, can, can get that depending on what the makeup of the fragrance is. Up next, we got a great username here. Uh, User-CB8DD3RC9Z. That's a good one. I've said this before in other comment sections, <laughs> just apparently, what are you doing? You're just going around to everybody's comments like, I gotta let them know this. This is important. But Layton loved it, wore it off and on for a few weeks, and then became unable to stand it almost overnight. What happened to you, man? Wore it for a few weeks, you went to bed one night, you were just like, hmm, I love Layton. You woke up the next morning, I'm gonna find every comment section and tell them how much I hate Layton. I don't know why, I don't know what changed overnight, but I'm fueled with fury and rage. And everyone must know. I'm just playing, I'm assuming that you're not going around like saying how much you, you hate it because this is, a, this is a normal comment, but I just think it's funny that you put that in there. Layton for me, is good. I like it, uh, obviously, I mean, I've talked about it a bunch. Uh, it does have designer sensibilities to it. It's got good quality, people love it. Easy to wear, really versatile, appealing. I mean, I, I dig it. But I'm sorry, dear user, 
that Layton does not work for you and that overnight you just had to put it in its place. <laughs> now we got one from jmickle175 who says Prada Loam. I bought a tester when I first started my collection. I liked it a lot for about six months. Then I just sorta couldn't get over the huge powderiness of the fragrance. Although not a bad scent, it just isn't me and it just sits on my shelf collecting dust. Yes, it is powdery. Yeah, soapy, powdery. Yeah. And this is something that I think does happen uh, with regularity is that, you know, people who start getting into fragrances, they check out stuff, you know, like some of these here or many other fragrances that people have talked about, people really enjoy generally, and they start with those. And then they wear them and they're like, oh yeah, this is good, I like this. But then as time goes on, maybe they start to discover more what really speaks to them. So then instead of going off of just the generalities of fragrance at large, you know, the stuff that everybody has spoken about, they maybe start to realize, Iris, that's nah, actually not really my thing. And maybe something that's more Tonka Amber Cinnamon is your thing, right? Again, nothing wrong with that, but as you sample more things, wear more things, and, and learn more, you start to figure out what speaks to you. So a lot of this is maybe not hating something, I feel like, but it's just your own personal growth as you figure out what you like. Which is a beautiful thing. Lenya, Zamog Zamog Lenya says, Nautica Voyage. It wasn't my first, but was one of the first fragrances I wore a ton. Almost half the bottle down, by the way. As time goes on, and me buying more fragrances that are more challenging than the rest, I'll never see myself wearing the Nautica ever again. I think that's actually, that's just kind of, kind of what I just talked about, kind of, in a way. And Nautica Voyage, I think, for the price point, it, it does an admirable job of being one of those cheapy, beginner, sporty, clean fragrances that you can wear a lot of places that for the price point smells more expensive than what it costs. Cause that's like $15 a lot of the time, you know, 15 to 20 basically. I do think that Voyage as you grow maybe becomes like not exciting anymore, but it still is a, a nice little safe one to keep around, I feel. Snatchy McGraverson, I still like that name. It says, Yop Ohm. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't gotta say anything. Just show me the bottle and I'll be like, oh. The only surprising part about that is you loved it at one point. I've definitely gone through more bottles of it than I care to admit. Now my nose cries when I smell it. Now that is evolution and that is proper evolution, yeah. Your nose cries now, you know what that is? That's karma for all the people in your past that you've made smell that by all those bottles you went through. Karma's a bitch, karma. Snatchy, I hope you've learned a lesson. Last up, we have Vin Zeggs who says, by Killian's Angel Share. Ooh. When I first smelled that fragrance, I really loved it. After a while, I got tired of the cognac, cinnamon, vanilla overdose. Then all the clones that came after, they're still coming. I just got sick of the fragrance and sold my bottle. It'll be a long time until I can wear a fragrance like that again. Yeah, Angel Share. I mean, I still really enjoy it a lot. It's one of those fragrances I can go for a while without smelling. And when I spray it and smell it again, I just kind of fall in love with it again. You bring up a valid point with the clones. I think that Angel Share has gotta be right now the most cloned fragrance as far as like new clones coming out. Kamara was the first big clone of Angel Share, uh, but then you had so many come out in rapid succession after that. New ones are still coming out. And the, the crazy thing about it is a lot of these clones coming out are actually very good. But then you have the issue where there's a lot of clones of that and they're all very good and they're doing slight tweaks and variations each one. And yeah, it does start to be a bit much where you're just like, how many, how many more do we need? I'm not sure. So Angel Share, once you loved and now you do not. There we are guys, 10 fragrances that you once loved, you no longer do. All these guys are very sad right now. I think the one that sticks out the most to me is this little guy. <laughs> like all these heavy hitters, these hype beasts, these bestsellers. Oh, the one gold, oh, okay. Sorry, not to bag on you anymore. I'm sorry, I take it back, I take it back. I'm feeling very bad for it. Thank you guys for hanging with me here. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.